Kriyani Rahayu next in the women's doubles. So welcome back to Vanta, wonderful sports complex. You can see the football pitch, there's indoor arenas. I think there's an ice rink here as well, isn't there? Where the venue at the background, the ice rink, uh, just in the foreground there. Uh, but inside uh, this arena, we've got a thrilling encounter in our Group C decider between the former champions, Indonesia, and Denmark. Denmark, of course, beat the finest at the Sudaman Cup twice, but they haven't been in the final for 10 years. So, women's doubles up next, and it is the Olympic champions, Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu, up against the uh, Danes. Second session, that'll be on court one this afternoon. House Finland up against India. So as far as Indonesia are concerned, well, what delight, what scenes of joy, what emotion there was in Tokyo as this pair, Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu, won the gold medal at the Olympic Games, beating Cheng Xin Cheng and Jia Yi Fan of China in the final, but they've beaten the number one seeds Fukushima and Hirota in the group. Quarter final, they beat Du Yuer and Li Yin Wei. Semi final, beat Li So He and Shin Sung Chan. Who would have predicted a gold medal before the Olympic Games? It was a fairy tale story for these two. Tournament of their lives. Their opponents, the Danes, Mike and Frogel and Sarah Tourson, the European Championship bronze medalists, in fact three bronze medals from European Championships. Led out by Mike and Frogel, the younger of the two players. And this will be a seventh meeting between these two pairs and uh, that will be pleasing for all Indonesian fans uh, because they're one two down in the overall tie but uh, this women's doubles this is the seventh meeting and Poli and Rahayu 
had never been beaten in the previous six. But the last time they met, it was three games. 23-21 in the final of the Indonesian Masters last year. They had to save two match points, did the Indonesians. Uh, coming from 15-18 down in the third game before winning it 23-21. So, uh, despite the fact that the Indonesians are the Olympic champions, don't write off the Danes. The Danes have a habit of surprising higher-ranked pairs. Yeah, they, they like to play as, as underdogs. As indeed do most athletes, but they they really do produce when there there's yep. no pressure on. Yes. So here is uh, Gracia Bolli, unbelievably uh, making her eighth Sudaman Cup campaign. The 34-year-old was born in Jakarta, but brought up in Manado, right in the north of North Sulawesi, and has been as high as two on the world ranking, and that was with former partner uh, Mehuswari. Fourteen years ago, she played in her first Sudaman Cup in Glasgow in 2007. Apriani Rahayu is making her third Uber Cup camp. Uber Cup. This is the Sudaman Cup campaign. 23 years of age, born in Lawulu, in Kindari, southeast Sulawesi. Number six on the world ranking, as you saw, have been as high as three. And as you can see, well, they weren't selected against the Russian Federation, but they did play on Monday against Canada. It was the fourth match on, and Indonesia were 1 2 down. Sound familiar? That's the situation now. But they beat Rachel Chan and Catherine Choi in two straight games, 16 and 10, uh, to level it at 2 all in the tie uh, before Indonesia won the final match. Mike and Froho is 26 years of age, born in Unza, which is where we have the Denmark Open. Been as high is as 14 in the world ranking, that's uh, a couple of places lower, uh, or higher I should say, than they are right now. Her partner, Sarah Tuerson, is 30 years of age. They were fourth in the group at the Olympic Games, and semi-finalists at the European Championships earlier this year. Now, they weren't selected against Canada. That was the tie on Sunday. But on Monday, did play against the Russian Federation, where Denmark won 4-1. It was the fifth match, and they beat Alina Davliatova and Ekaterina Malkova in two straight games. So our court officials, as you saw, Cody Leach from... America, our umpire, and three Cox from the Netherlands, the service judge. Thomas Stangl, Danish doubles coach in the coaching chair, and Enghian for the Indonesian pair. Cody Leach ready to ask for play to commence. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Denmark, represented by Sarah Tugesen and Maiken Fjergaard. And on my left, Indonesia, represented by Apriane Rahayu and Gracia Poli. Denmark to serve, Sarah Tugesen to Gracia Poli. Love all, play. So Denmark nearest to us, Mike and Froor and Sara Tuerson up against the Olympic champions, Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu. Yeah, well played, well intercepted from Sara Tuerson. So Morton, do you remember on the first day of play when we were commentating on India against yes. Thailand and I was wondering whether the 17 matches played at Sudman Cup by Ponapa, Ashwini yeah. Ponapa, whether that was a record. 
I've only managed to check female players so far. I'm ploughing my way through it. And I can tell you this is interesting because Gracia Poli, not only is this her eighth Sugarman amazing campaign, she has been selected for 23 matches before here in Finland. Only got to play 20 of them, but because, of course, at the knockout stage, you yes, don't play yeah, dead matches. Yeah. Okay, yes. 20 Sudaman Cup matches she's played in her career, winning 14 of them. What a record. That's pretty good. Isn't that impressive? Yeah. I've yet to look at Hindra Seti one. He <laughs> may just beat it. Yes. I promise I'll get that done before the end of the week. <laughs> yeah. missed it now we know that Poli and Rahayu at times a lot of the time very happy to defend yes. they've got rock solid defences but what I was impressed about with the Olympic final was especially with Rahayu yes. how she seemed to be more willing to turn defence into attack with drives and blocks I thought she was the best player on court in all honesty. She was, definitely. I completely agree. So, how do the Danes counteract that style of play? That was a double hit from the Danes, well spotted yeah. by the umpire. What have the Danes got to do to try and break that down? First of all, they have to be extremely patient. Um, then I will try to, to bring Polly into the game as much as possible. Um, she is the one that could tie her out. Uh, uh, she's the oldest of all the players on court. Um, if they can keep her on on the back exactly like this, because the power from Polly is not so great from the back, and what we saw here, stepping right into that uh, attacking shot and played a beautiful defensive shot, yeah. and it was an outright winner. So I, I would focus, if at all possible, try to put some pressure on Polly and see how that would work. Especially at the back of the court now. Especially at the back of the court. She likes to move forward and let Rahayu work at the back. And I completely agree with you. She played so well in that final at the Olympics. This lady. Uh, yeah. The way she attacked, she was all over the place and she played so many winners. Golden opportunity okay. from Tursen. thing is again now you're asking me what the Danes should do I would rather try to keep and maintain the initiative but not per perhaps smashing a hundred percent because I don't think they would get much out of that just keep it down half smashing and then looking at all the counter-attacking opportunities J just like that keep it just keep it low and then give away the initiative like this, hope that Rahayu perhaps would have attacked that one and then set in on the counter-attacking. Yeah, we're seeing the defensive qualities of the Indonesians already. I think the thing is, it's interesting because when you're playing against a pair like the Indonesians who are so competent in their defensive play, I think, but I don't have your coaching pedigree, so I, I mean this is just, you know, more of a fan talking, but I think you should go onto the court thinking, I'm, I'm never going to expect to hit a winner from the back of the court, I have to be setting it up for my yes. partner at the front of the court to yes. make the winner. Yeah, but that's, that's it, and, and sometimes 
you have to give away initiative to take it back in a counter-attacking situation. So, so play these um, these sort of uh, attacking lifts where you're hoping the, your opponent will attack it and you'd be ready for it. So it's a bit of tempting your opponent to attack and then you have a chance to set in with the counter-attacking. Oh, good defence. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't think that the Danes have got power enough to penetrate with their attack from the back. No. And that's why I say you, you, there is no point in hitting a, a, a powerful smash unless it's placed so well that it's going to force a reply that's going to be in the hitting zone of your partner at the front of the court. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Good play exactly by, like by Saad. Really good play by Saad. Two reasons. Good flex uh, from Tusen. But I, I like the words that you used uh, about the two Indonesian players when you said competent. I, I really think they are very, very competent. They play well mm. and uh, they are solid in their defence. They grind a lot of doubles combinations to the ground and they are very steady in what they're doing. And adding on that layer with Rahayu in Tokyo where mm. she suddenly became a force in attack as well yeah that really made a big big difference and and turning the defense into attack that's yes. you know i mean they were just on such a roll it's oh. an absolute joy to watch yeah. I, I have to say and for polly that roller coaster ride that she's had from london 2012 when she was disqualified for the competition uh, december she got married the very next day after her marriage sadly her her brother died and uh, and then winning the gold medal, I know you were very emotional. Yeah, I was. Uh, beating Hus was very emotional about yeah. it. He was in Tokyo with us. It was yeah. the most wonderful scenes and an incredible story. You couldn't you couldn't write it any better. No. It's the perfect script. Yeah. But they've got a nice little lead, haven't they? Five point advantage, only yeah. eight minutes played. And it was a very nice block shot from Pulley. Uh, she played a drop shot from the back. It was an, an outright winner. Mm, there's something about across the body on the attacking play there, I think, from Enkiang. If I'm interpreting his gestures correctly. What a difference he's made, isn't he? A wonderful coach. Uh, really calm, collected. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I love to, to watch him as a player when he played the men's doubles and uh, it was it was such a joy to watch and then they, he went on to Singapore to become a coach he did. and I think he did well there but after his return to PBSI in the Indonesian Bamton Association I think he's made a huge difference for the women's doubles couldn't concur more that was a good return of serve Too long. Yeah. It's like the Danes are almost over eager, too eager to kill it at the net and they made a few mistakes because they know they're not getting a lot of chances so when it's there then they tend to possibly do a little bit too much. Over forcing it. Yes. More left. Oh, 
Everton here are on serve wide of the centre line. Great awareness from Pulley. Double hit. Do you know that was something that I thought in the Olympic uh, final as well, Morton? Did you see the way they just looked at each other and smiled? Yeah. It's it's that uh, support of each other. Hey, we made a mistake. It doesn't matter. Let's just go on. A smile. Mistakes yeah. happen. We all make mistakes. We're all human. Yeah. No sort of intensity of, you know. And keeping that relaxed attitude, I thought, was brilliant in Tokyo as well. Yeah, it's 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 um, it, they have very very strong communication. Yeah. And I think in in many ways that's also what made it uh, so emotional in, yeah. in Tokyo. Yeah. right about overpress when, yeah. when they get an opportunity they know their opponent's def defense is so good that instead of just working away at it yeah. they're thinking i've got to kill it now exactly i've got a half chance i've got to kill it, Sarah kill has it done now it four or five times yes yeah. got to keep it calm yeah. if it takes three times to get it on the floor it takes three times yes yeah well done. 11, two points in it. Four of the last five points to the Danes. block that's the counter attack you're talking about exactly that's what I'm talking about. sometimes you have to give away the initiative to take it back with a, a very very strong purpose and that's what uh, Sarah Tuzan was doing here and that's exactly what they need to do because that will get their opponents a bit out of balance and then there is a gap to be played <laughs> well worked, well worked. Goodness me, they were lucky to get away with that. Was I being a bit too harsh saying it was a shocking serve? It was certainly no, very No, it was absolutely shocking. It was <laughs> yeah. so high. And uh, Rahayu did nothing with it. No. Extraordinary. So now just one point, the deficit. Six 
of the last eight points. Oh yeah, she made absolutely certain about yeah. that. I'm sure it was going wide. Definitely, yes. Took no chance. Yeah, you may as well when you've got a sitter like that. Just make sure, put it away. Yeah, it was a nice serve, a low serve out wide from Polly. Oh, she served out wide again. It's going to the backhand side of Tuerson. That's a couple of very good serves from Polly. And that's quite surprising, isn't mm, it? It is. She's definitely not the best of servers. Yeah, that's a good return of serve, though. 15, 18. Well, they're challenging that. Mm. Yeah, just as well. They might as well, but I yeah. fear that they will lose that challenge. Left arm goes up from the umpire in indication that we need the instant review system. If his right arm goes up, it means we need the tournament referee. Oh, it was a great challenge. That was a great challenge. Well done. Service over. 16, 19. Had to take that at about shoulder height. I can fall. Fast push doing the damage. Game point opportunities for Indonesia. Notice that Morton serve out wide, yes, a straight net reply, and, and it was Rahayu getting it. Yeah, I saw that too. Surely, <laughs> you, if you're going to serve low, you can follow forward to the net, yeah. you cover the net shots. Yeah. Well, they've got it worked out if that's how they want to play. That's it. the plan. How can we argue with that? They're Olympic champions for goodness sake. But I saw it, yes. Very unusual. It's, it's gone long. Yep. Opening game to the Olympic champions from Indonesia, Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu. 21-17 opening game in 20 minutes of play. Just a little bit better in most departments of the game, I think, the Indonesians in that opening game. There's Gracie of Bolly. 
looks satisfied. So does the coach. One game to the good. Oh, they look as if they've both got a bit of a cold. Yeah, I noticed that before at the mid-game interval as well. Huge change in temperature between Indonesia and Finland. <laughs> you can say that. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful outside at the moment and talking of temperature differences between Indonesia and Finland, I can tell you that the Finnish capital Helsinki is the coldest capital city in the world. The average temperature of less than zero degrees. Coldest capital in the world. Capital city. I'm amazed. Yeah. Isn't okay. that beautiful? If we get some time, we're going to go for some walking <laughs> through all that woodland and yeah, that would be it's beautiful, would it? But of course we're not allowed beautiful. to. With our COVID rules, we're not allowed to go anywhere. Nope. We are in a bubble. We're in a bubble. We either have to be at the hotel or the venue. So one game to the good. The Olympic champions, Polly and Rahayu. Oh, off she goes to get a new racket. Yeah, hold the fort, yeah. don't worry. Um, well played by the deck. I think she picked up her partner's racket. No wonder that was no good. <laughs> Chances are. <laughs> well, it was interesting to hear that Thomas Downgall was saying, the coach from Denmark was saying that uh, he was fairly happy with the attack from the back, uh, from, uh, from the two girls. It felt that um, it was um, good, powerful, and uh, had a meaning so i think they were quite happy with that from the back of the court now that's the formation that the danes have got to try and avoid because yes. with uh, rahayu at the back of the court there and polly hovering round the net that's what the danes have got to try and disrupt and they talked about uh, playing a few more flick serves exactly to do that. Interesting. play from Gracia Poli. It's so strange to see her serving low surfaces. Yeah. Three in a row now. what confidence an Olympic gold medal can give you. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I mean, I do feel a little bit sorry for them. I mean, it was Indonesia's first ever Olympic medal in the women's doubles discipline mm. and it was a gold and they yep. went back to Indonesia and 
had two weeks of hotel quarantine. She couldn't yes. see her husband. Yeah. Uh, no celebrations. Yeah. Uh, that's that a tough a, one. Yeah, uh, it was a bit of a dampener, wasn't it? Yeah. But, It's a lovely block. And that's a lovely drop too. It's a good rally. Yeah, super finish from Mike and Fogel. smile at each other and yeah, it's good to see Sarah trying to finish that one. the patience yeah but I, I think if I was the two Indonesians if if I was on court I would just stay extremely patient uh, the Danes will hand it to the two Indonesians by you know making these kind of mistakes they will well, we, did, we did have a glimpse there of some really rather heavy strapping I think on Gracia Polly's knee seem to have any injury problems in Tokyo. Never got behind that, Polly. Brackets. Yep. Five, eight. Deep in thought, Thomas Stungle. That's long. Yeah, so is Sarah. So Sarah. Both the Danes have made a service error in this match now. Yeah. 
Uh, that was wide. Oh, what a drop shot from yeah. Gracia Bolli. And a six point advantage at the mid game interval for the Indonesians. Well, you won't see a better drop shot than that. That was perfection from Polly. E. need to change something they need to yes. do something a little different and your recommendation would be Morton relax yeah that's easier said than done how do you I do that um, I, I think it goes back to what we discussed earlier I think they are too over eager they um, they think they have to play the most perfect shot all the time in order to, to win their points and uh, by doing so they are almost making their opponents inhuman mm. and um, and I think they should relax play the shots play with their opponents wait for their chances see what happens don't be too over eager to kill it and so on go in there go with the flow enjoy it interesting another wonderful drop shot from Gracia Poli we went to the mid game interval with a drop shot to the centre of the court that time cross court to the forehand side of the Danes Uh, service error. Uh, the reason I say it's interesting, Morton, because you and I are totally different characters. Yes. Now, my <laughs> advice would be to <laughs> throw <Whack> all <laughs> caution to the wind, yeah. just go for everything. Yes. All out attack. But the thing is, it, it doesn't work against these two. It's, it's, it's coming back, it's coming back, it's coming back. So play with them and uh, wait for your, your your really big opportunities rather than go and have a, a big go at these half chances that we've seen so many times that they've not been able to capitalize on as i say we're different characters <laughs> <laughs> but that's only good yes that's only good it's good we're not agreeing all the time I don't think I ever played a patient game of badminton, did I? <laughs> Not as far as I remember. <laughs> Not the ones I've seen. I'm very busy on court. <laughs> That's a polite way of saying it. Turn of serve. Uh, that was nice rotational play by Polly and Rahayu. The Olympic rings there around her neck. 
Oh, it's lovely. Lovely piece of jewellery. The five Olympic rings, the five continents. And the colours on the Olympic rings, of course, represent colours of every flag. One of those colours are on every flag in the world. Okay. That's interesting. Considering there are, what, how many nations? Well, I think it was 207 that yeah. were in Tokyo. Plus the refugee team, of course, yep. that was under the IOC flag. Yes. Yeah, we had a badminton player. Yes. From uh, Holland or Netherlands, playing under that flag. Syrian refugee. Correct. Mahmoud. Well, that's well left. Oh, there's a challenge. A challenge here from Tourson. Well, you may as well. You're 10 points adrift already. Yeah, it's out. Yeah, clearly out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. 18-7, Well, this has just been a demonstration, really, in the second game, hasn't it, by the Olympic champions? Best of serves, we've got away with it. And now it's match point opportunities. A whole host of them for Bolly and Rahayu. Oh, good return of serve. Yeah, well placed. long and the women's doubles to Indonesia in the form of the Olympic champions Gracia Boli and Apriani Rahayu 21-17 21-9 the margin of their victory 40 minutes and it was a very comprehensive second game 21-9 there's confirmation and that of course means that the overall tie this group decider two matches apiece and it will all come down to the mixed doubles the olympic champions have done their job and they've done it in fine form too so masks must be put on before departing court take leave of centre stage well it was very impressive indeed this the match point opportunity 
the drive long of the back line from the Danes from Frogo and the Olympic champions deliver and keep Indonesia with a chance to top the group and therefore get a seeding position at the quarter-final knockout stage. So two all in the overall tie. So the beautiful scenes outside our venue here in Vanta in Finland. Surrounded by woodland, this magnificent venue. And this the scene inside. And what a wonderful climax to this group deciding tie between Indonesia.